Hey guys, it's CarGuy11. Today I want to talk about home charging options for your Mach-E like mine or any EV really. A lot of people think you need to park your car in a garage, in a warm spot. No, mine stays outside in the snow, in the cold, and it will be outside in the su hot summer as well. And also, a lot of people think you need the fastest charging possible, but no, you don't. You're at home, you're, you, you sleep for eight hours a night, hopefully, and uh, you really don't need the fastest charging. So today we're gonna go through the options available, so stay tuned. So first, let me show you what Ford provides with the car. It's really cool. They give you an actual mobile charger and you can use it as a home charger as well. And what's neat about it, it of course has the J1772 plug for the vehicle. You can get an adapter for these, you know, to charge a Tesla even with this. But the other end, you have two options. You can actually charge on your 120 volt outside outlet. That's actually what I did for about the first month I owned the vehicle. I charged it on the 110 outlet. Uh, this plugs into the top of the unit and right into the car. You can use this for inside the garage, outside, it's all weatherproof. But what's another cool feature of this one, it actually gives you a NEMA 1415 connector as well for a 240 volt line. Now this one will charge at 32 amps and later in the video I'll go through all the different uh, amperages and how fast it charges and everything. But just wanted to show you out of the box when you buy your Mach-E, you already have a home charging solution. And again, that is what I used uh, when I first bought the vehicle. But eventually I did want to upgrade to something a little faster, more powerful. I did not have a 240 volt line in my garage or even outside my garage. So I actually had a 50 amp, 240 volt line run. And shout out to Just Electric who did an awesome job. It wasn't the easiest install at my house. My electric panel was on the one side of my house opposite of the garage and the driveway. So they had to run it in winter as well to do all this. So they did an awesome job. But yes, so I had a 50 amp, 240 volt line run and I had a 1450 NEMA socket installed. And I wanted this because then I had the choice of an EVSE, like this one from Max Beating Rods. Now this unit is UL rated and Energy Star compliant, which is great. And this is a permanent installation. Obviously it's mounted to my house, which I wanted. And here's the cord. It has the same connector, of course and it has a nice mounting spot and the cord wrap. So it stays nice when not in use. It doesn't look too bad hanging outside the front of my house. And the cable is 24 feet, so it will extend to both lanes of my driveway in case I have to charge on the other side. But as I said, this is a 40 amp charger and it's pretty cool. In the app, you can adjust what amperage you want. So you don't want to run 40 amp. You could go down to 32, 24, whatever you want. I'm already underrated. This is a 50 amp line. You should be 80% of that. So you really, the max you should continuously run is 40 amp, which is the max of this charger. You can also hardwire this if you wanted to. I, again, chose the plug and socket because in case I need to put a new charger in or something like that, uh, you can do that very easily. Just plug this in real quick and I'll show you some cool features of it. As you can see, the lights are white, not blue. They should be blue when charging and there's a reason for that. It's because the unit is locked until they give you an RFID card, until you activate it with the card and then you hear the click now it is starting to charge you hear the car activating and you see the blue lights so it's really neat for an outside insulation like i have so that no one can just come in to your driveway and start charging or you can also start it from the app so pretty neat feature there well guys i have been using this charger a couple weeks now and i did notice a condition where it's not ideal so 
Once the battery is charged on the Mach-E or any vehicle, it completes charging and turns off. But say you wanted to remote start your vehicle to precondition the cabin, or if the vehicle itself turns on to heat up the battery, which it will under very cold conditions under freezing, uh, the charger will not output any more power. You have to unplug it from the vehicle and then re-plug it back in in order for it to do the handshake and start charging again. So again, this is not ideal for if you're parking the vehicle outside. In the garage, it's not so much an issue. But just wanted to let you guys know, I will still put an Amazon link below to the product if you're interested because it is a well-priced charger for all the features it has. But anyway, guys, let's go in and I will give you all the charge times for the different amperages. All right, guys, let me quickly go through the different charging times based on the amperage charger you're using. And this is for my 2022 Mach-E all-wheel drive with the extended range battery. And the extended range battery gives you 91 kilowatt hours of usable battery. The actual pack itself is close to 100, but they leave some in reserve as always. So like I said, I started out using the mobile Ford charger at level one voltage, just my outside outlet, 120 volts. 12 amps it pulls with the level one plug, which I showed, and that gives you a power of 1.4 kilowatts an hour. So this column is in hours, and I did it if your Mach-E was at say 20% charge and you wanna charge it up to 90%, which Ford recommends keeping the battery at 90% unless you're going on a long trip that need you need the full range of 100%. So I just gave pretty much a worst case 20 to 90%, which I, I mean, in my driving, uh, less than 100 miles a day, you're not even getting to 20, maybe 50, 60%. So anyway, on that level one charger, it would take 44 hours, which is a lot, you know, almost two days of charging. But if you're not doing that many miles, it still is able to maintain your or top off your battery. And you could always go to a faster public charger if you had to and I did do that like I said when I first bought the vehicle to get the bulk of my charging done and then just topped off at home with the level one the 240 volt starts level two but I've noticed that the free public ones are around 24 amps and only give you around six kilowatts of power so they're not exactly fast of course they're way faster than level one but that same charge would take 11 hours at that amperage so then we move on to 32 amps. So 240 volts at 32 amps. This is the max of the Ford mobile charger using that NEMA 1450 plug. That gives you 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of power. So you're gonna charge up in eight, eight and a half hours, which again is overnight, probably will work for most people. And that's why I really, I mean, if you don't wanna spend any money on another charger, I see the Ford mobile charger as a great solution. Now, in this case, I installed that 40 amp charger. Again, that steps it up to 9.6 kilowatt hours of power per hour. And that drops it down to six hours. So as you can see, as you go up, you're not gaining as much, but a nice little bump there. And if if you need faster charging, that's definitely an option. Now, the final option, you can buy the chargers that are wired in and you can get a 60 amp breaker installed instead of the 50 and run these level two chargers at 48 amps. Uh, that'll give you 11.5 kilowatt hours of power. But the only thing is that onboard Mach-E charger does a max of 10.5 kilowatts charging. So you're not gaining much here. In fact, you're not gaining much over the 9.6 you're getting off the 40 amp. I probably wouldn't recommend doing this option, but if you had a, you know, a Lightning, Ford Lightning with the bigger battery or those trucks with these massive batteries, they do have higher kilowatt uh, charging on board. So I think they're up to like 19 kilowatts. So then you could take advantage of the higher amperage, but for the Mach-E, uh, no, you don't need that. I would think 
the 40 amp right here is your sweet spot and that's what most of the plug-in or wired chargers are the mobile ones tend to be lower but anyway guys just wanted to show you that you don't need the highest amperage if your schedule is such that you're you know coming home every night to charge i think eight hours is is fine uh hopefully like i said you're sleeping the eight hours and can charge it up overnight but guys definitely ask questions in the comments below and tell me what EVSE you are using for your car. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for tons more Mach-E videos, and I'll see you in the next one.